So today we'll be talking about binary operations. Now let's first have a look at the definition of binary operation. So as you can see, I have written here, if S be a non-empty set, then F such that it maps in elements from S cross S to S is said to be a binary operation. So essentially, it is an operation or it is a function which assigns definite elements of S to each ordered pair of uh, each ordered pair AB, all of which belong to this uh, set of S cross S elements. So we essentially what happens is, let's say we have a set of uh, elements which we call S. And what happens is we form a, a separate set of S cross S, which essentially is a combination of paired elements or ordered elements of these two sets. So for every element in S, we take another element in S and we pair up these elements to form this entire set of S cross S. So that is S cross S. And what we do is for every ordered pair or every uh, pair of elements in this S cross S set, we form a connection with the elements of S again. So this will become more evident once we uh, get on with the exercises and examples of the binary operation, but that is the formal definition of binary operation. So uh, it's essentially a rule of correspondence. Now let's look at some, uh, some properties of binary operations. So we know something called a commutative law, which essentially says that for every A, B belonging to the set of S. So essentially, as I mentioned before, S is the set of elements on which a binary operation is defined. We name it S. You can name it A, you can name it B, you can name it whatever set you want. But uh, as a rule of uh, thumb, we usually call this to be the set of S. Uh, on which the essential binary operation is defined. Now, if for every A and B, for every two elements of the set on which the binary operation is defined, if for every such A, B, we have A operated on B equals B operated on A, then we say that the operation star under consideration is commutative on the set of S, on the set of elements which form the set S essentially. So what do we mean by this? Let's take a, let's look at some operations which we know already. So what are the basic operations that we know? We are taking just a few here. So we have addition, additive operation, which is uh, denoted by this plus sign. All of us know, I'm for sure we all, all of, it, all of us know this. We have the subtraction operation, which is uh, denoted by the minus sign. We have the multiplicative operation, which is denoted by this cross sign. Sometimes we also denote it by a dot. And we have a division operation, which we, well, kids define it this way, but sometimes we define it this way as well. So those are the operations that we know. Now, uh, let's try and check each of these properties with the operations that we know of. So as I mentioned before, and when you define a binary operation, you need to specify the set on which you're defining the binary operation. So let's look at the additive operation. So let's look at this plus. And uh, for the time being, let's define it on the set of integers or positive integers. So that's Q plus. So that is the set of positive integers. That is the notation that we use for the set of positive integers, which essentially means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The set notations that we use essentially use. So we have the set of natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Essentially, the numbers that we can count with. So we cannot essentially count 0, which is why we don't call 0 to be a natural number as such. Um, that is the, expre or the, the notation for natural numbers is uh, n. It's, it's a script n, essentially. Positive integers includes 0. Then we have the set of integers, which also brings in the set of negative integers, which is minus one, minus two, minus three, with forming which the combination of negative integers, positive integers, and zero gives me the set of integers. And we can go on and on from there. Let's take the additive operation and let's take the positive uh, rational, uh, positive integers for our uh, consideration for the timing. So what we need to find out for every element in the set of positive integers, we need to check whether A star B, where here star will represent the additive operation or plus, for sure all of us know that A plus B equals B plus A. Similarly, uh, multiplication, let's take multiplication into account and let's take the same uh, 
set of positive integers and we know that a b equals b a so essentially we mean commutative law minus operation the subtraction operation essentially is not commutative in the positive in set of set of positive integers why you ask because let's say i have a minus b this a doesn't exactly look like a but let's assume that a uh, this is a so a minus b is something but we know that that is not equal to b minus a if we take minus common a minus b is actually minus b minus a so a minus b is not b minus a which means when i'm operating one after the other the order essentially is of prime importance in case of subtraction similarly in case of division the order is of prime importance a by b is not the same as b by a they are different a by b is one by b by a a minus b is minus of b minus a so essentially the minus the the subtraction operation and the division operation does not hold or commutative law does not hold in case of minus uh, in case of subtraction or division in the set of uh, positive integers whereas the operation or commutative law holds for the operation of addition and multiplication in the set of positive integers so that's the commutative law done the next law that we move towards is this uh, associative law so associative law is kind of like a level up for commutative law in case of commutative law we had two elements uh, does the reverse operation that is uh, taking the operation of the first and the second and the operation of the second and the first do both of them give me the same result that is what i check in case of commutative law easy way to remember this is let's look at the word commute so commuting means transporting or a move, moving from one place to another so let's say you are going from your home to uh your uh educational institution so in this situation i don't know it's difficult to imagine going to school or college nowadays but let's imagine that you're going from home to your school or your college and you take a particular route if you're a rational person you will take the shortest route and that is essentially the operation between your home and your uh educational institution or your uh, school or college now that is the route that you will take from your home to college so essentially you're moving from a to b and you take a particular route if you move from your college to your home will you be taking a different route or will you be taking a same route if you are taking a same route you are set to commute don't take it grammatically or don't take it literally but that that is an easy way to remember what the commutative law is and you will be able to understand what is the difference between commutative law and associative law so if the route that you take from a to b is the same as the route that you take from b to a then the commutative law is said to hold if it's not the same or you're not said to have the commutative law holding so that is the law or the commutative law let's look at the associative law so as i have written here a star b star c should be the same as a star b star c so let's look at it uh, at a at a pictorial way so let's say there are three places that you visit one is your house the other is your friend's house and c let's say is a, a school or college so you move from a to b that is you move from your house to your friend's house and then you move to a uh, college it's essentially a star b star c so this is the route that you follow and when you take a star b star c it essentially means you're first moving from b to c because uh, as we know bod must essentially means we take the bracket first so we first consider the root b star c so that's this uh, let me just take a different color so let's take blue and i'll draw it a little uh, further away so that you can see the well i covered the colors <laughs> let's just yeah uh, okay so what happens is uh, when i'm taking the blue color i'm essentially talking about the b star c root first and then i am saying i moved a to that place so that's this position and in case of the first operation that i discussed it was this so essentially what i have is at first i am taking these two operate these two elements and then i'm operating the result with c and in this case i am taking these two elements first and then operating the result with a if my results are the same in both cases then i say that associative law holds so let's now look at um, examples so we have the same operations to fall back on the very familiar addition subtraction multiplication division that we all know of so let's look at addition 
So uh, we write the same expression and this time we again take the set of positive uh, integers. So and uh, what we do is we essentially write a plus b and we first add these two elements and with the resulting element we add c. Let's not write the sign here but what we do is we this time we add b plus c first and then we add a to the resultant. So let's say a is 1, b is 2, c is 3. So that's a plus b, that's 1 plus 2, that's 3 plus c. So that gives me 6. Let's look at it at the other way. So we have a equals 1, b equals 2, c equals 3. So let's first add b and c. That's 2 plus 3, which is 5. And with the resultant of the b plus c operation, we add a, which is 1. So we have 1 plus, so we have 1 plus 5, which again turns out to be 5. So essentially, a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c, which essentially means that the additive operation is associative on the set of positive integers. Now, what you can do is you can check with the minus uh, or the subtractive operation and try to find out whether the minus operation is associative on the set of positive integers. And you can write them down in the comment section below, whatever you, uh, whatever solution or result you find out. So that's the associative law done. Next, we move on to the distributive law. So up until now, for every law that we have come across, we have used only one operation. Another thing that I would like to mention is, as we have mentioned, star operation here, but we already know four symbols of operations. So, so pertaining to that, I would like to mention that there are certain ways in which you can denote operations. So uh, let's just, yeah. So we can have operations that are denoted by uh, star, we can have operations that are denoted. I would say we better not use these four symbols or essentially this six, these are six symbols because we already have a very uh, defined way of def uh, defined way of, we have a very formal way of defining these six symbols because we have been using them since the day we essentially learn mathematics. So I'd say let's not use these six operations unless of course mentioned in the sum. So if you have these particular operations or, or the sum defines that um, I have defined plus in this way, I have defined multiplication in this way, if the sum defines so, then of course you need to mention use that particular notation. You can't change it if the sum says so. But if you have a choice of defining or uh, denoting your uh, denoting your operation with your own symbols of your choice, then I would say avoid these six operations or avoid these six symbols. Essentially, you can use the star operation, you can use circles, you can even use made up symbols like this. So it doesn't matter which symbol you use. It's better if you don't use these six symbols unless, of course, specified. So let's move on to the distributive law. Now, as you can see from the definition, up until now, for each of the commutative and the associative uh, laws, we have used only, or we have taken into consideration only one operation. But in distributive law, we will essentially be analyzing the way into the way in which two operations, two different operations, interact with each other. So, how can we arrange these two operations uh, such that they give me the same um, answer? So uh, what happens is, uh, let's say I have this operation. So it's A star in bracket, we have B, uh, let's call it phi. So we have A star, B, phi, C. And uh, by distributive law, that this result should be the same as A star B, phi, A star C. And the reverse, so B, phi, C star A should be the same as B star A, phi, C star A for all ABC. Again, since we have three elements under consideration, we need to take three elements from the set on which the binary operation is defined, which is essentially S here. This distributive law is kind of difficult to visualize if you don't have the examples to work with. So again, we will fall back to the same old uh, operations that we have defined as of yet. This time we'll take the additive operation and the multiplicative operation. And as we have discussed, we'll take the set of positive integers. So star is multiplicative operation and phi is additive operation. So we have, I'll be using uh, the dot denotion or the dot symbol for multiplication. So I'll be writing A, B plus C. So that's the left hand side of this statement. So that's A star B phi C. So that's A multiplied by B plus C. And what they want us to write is this set. So that turns out to be a b 
plus AC. So if you replace star with multiplication and phi with addition, you end up with AB plus AC. AB, sorry, AB plus AC. And my handwriting has gone down the drain. So I don't think I need to explain that A, B plus C is the same as A, B plus A, C. Essentially, you take the, you, I call it breaking the bracket. So A, B plus C is the same as A, B plus A, C. Needless to say, the reverse also holds. Essentially, the multiplicative and the additive operation are set to follow the distributive law under the set of positive integers. So that is what we mean by distributive law. So that's the third law done. Uh, what you can do is, in order to practice, you can take different operations that we know of. So you can take different of all of these four operations. You can take different sets. You can take the set of natural numbers. You can take the set of integers as a whole. So include the negative integers as well. You can take the set of rational numbers, the set of real numbers, and you can check out which of these operations follow which of these laws under which condition. 